When we think about energy storage, the electrical battery is usually the first technology that we think about. Few of us think about ice or an ice slurry, but it turns out this is an excellent solution. Now consider a hot summer day. The energy usage profile for a town might look something like this. We have power, and here we have time. We start in the early mornings with most of the town sleeping. Then as people wake up, go about their business, we can see that the energy rises. And then it'll taper back down to where we started. What I'd like to draw your attention to is this peak. On this typical day, people are working, it's hot outside, and the air conditioning is working at its maximum. And this is where that ice battery can help us. To understand how, let's look at two communities. The first has what we would call traditional power sources. This might be coal, gas, nuclear, or hydro. The second community we'll call the green community. The green community incorporates a large number of solar panels and perhaps a little bit of wind. But in both cases, these communities have not invested in storage. So let's see what difference that makes. Let's consider day and night for each community. The traditional power plants are going to have problems during the day. They need to bring extra capability online in order to make up for this peak. Now this is typically going to take the form of fossil fuel based systems such as gas turbines. These are not particularly efficient and they're expensive to run. So that means during the day, power is going to be expensive. Communities with high concentrations of solar have the exact opposite problem. During the day, those solar panels provide lots of power, but at night, they've got to bring on additional capability. And once again, it's going to be those fast start fossil fuel based, uh, most likely gas turbine generators. In both cases, we've assumed these communities do not have energy storage systems, because it turns out that storing energy is incredibly difficult. I hope to make a few videos in the future to explore this concept more. But for now, let's get back to that ice battery. Think back to your science classes. Did you ever do an experiment where you took a block of ice and you added energy to it? Perhaps using a candle or a Bunsen burner. If you did, and if you measured the temperature of that block of ice, you would have seen that as the ice melts, you hit this plateau. It isn't until all the ice has melted that we see the temperature rise. And of course, it reaches another plateau. And we know these to be the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. I'm sure you guessed this already, but the ice battery works right here. I'm going to say this backwards, but know that it takes energy to go from a liquid to a solid, and that energy can be returned when you go from a solid back to a liquid, when we have these phase changes. Just know that considerable energy is required to make this phase change. In fact, the heat of fusion for water is 334 joules per gram. So using our ice battery, we'll store the energy as ice when it's convenient for us to do so. For the green communities, that means we're going to be making ice during the day. And for the traditional power generation, we'll be making ice at night. Let's make a quick sketch to show how this system works. Let's start with some insulated tanks. Inside these tanks, you'll find coiled pipe. To this pipe, we're going to add a pump. And now we can add in the building, which will have another coil of pipe, which connects back to the insulated tanks. So let's start by assuming that the insulated tanks contain ice. We will pump a brine or glycol solution through the coils. As the system runs, it'll cool the building. 
what actually happens is the excess heat from the building is moved from the building into the insulated tanks. So we're adding energy to our ice chunk, which will eventually cause it to melt. And now we need to add machinery to make more ice. I'll show that down here as a chiller. Once again we see a pump and more coils of pipe, both in the insulated tank and in the chiller. So the complete flow of energy in this system is from the building. The energy is then brought to the tank, which would normally cause the ice to melt, except now we have the chiller. So the chiller takes the energy that's in our insulated storage tanks and ultimately gets rid of it as heat. Okay, so that was a simplified diagram to show you the building blocks of our ice battery. Let's take a look at the math and see how effective it can be. Let's start with a 4,000 liter tank. That's about 1,000 gallons. Now we stated earlier that the heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram and water weighs one kilogram per liter. Energy is equal to the mass times the latent heat. So if we put all this together we'll find that the energy is equal to one point three four giga joules. We know that a joule is the same as a watt second, so now we can do a conversion to kilowatt hours. So when we're all done, we'll see that the energy is approximately 372 kilowatt hours. And that is a big number. I had to go back and check my math a few times. So what we've done is we've taken 4,000 liters, that's about 1,000 US gallons, and all we've done is we've gone from ice to liquid. And in the process, it required 372 kilowatt hours. When I think about kilowatt hours, my mind goes back to the lead acid battery. So you take something the size of a car battery, maybe 12 inches by 8 inches by 9 inches, and that stores approximately 1 kilowatt hour. So our ice battery has the energy equivalent of 372 lead acid batteries. That's incredible. We've taken a 4,000 liter system, about 1,000 US gallons, and we've said that's equivalent to 372 batteries. If you want a fun exercise, do the energy density. Compare how much energy is stored per unit weight, and you'll find that our ice battery is much lighter than the lead acid battery. In fact, our ice battery is on par with lithium ion battery technology. We've seen that the ice battery can store a lot of energy. Let's go back up to the top and see how this works as a system. For the traditional power system, you see we no longer have to buy energy at the peak. Instead, we can buy energy here when it's cheaper. On the other hand, if you live in a community with lots of solar power, you can make your ice during the peak solar times and then cool yourself using the ice battery for the rest of the day. I have some parting thoughts for you regarding the ice battery. In the world of renewable energies, I believe this is low-hanging fruit. This is easy, simple, mature technology that can be implemented today. The efficiency is very good, it's inexpensive, and the most hazardous material in it is the glycol, which is the same stuff you use in your car as antifreeze. And finally, technology like this is perfect for smart grid applications where from time to time the plant operator will need to shut down the chiller to shed loads and maintain system stability.